the place gutter tool. The place gutter tool inside of open roads drainage basically just tells the program that if let's say this inlet right here, let's say it doesn't collect 100% of the water. Whenever you place a gutter from one inlet to the next, the program knows that if there's any additional water that does not get collected in this inlet, it knows where that extra water needs to be collected at. If you don't do that, the program will still compute everything properly on the back end of it, which is at the final computation of where the water is coming out to. So you'd, you'd still have that final flow of all that area that you're collecting, but it won't compute it properly for the actual water that is bypassing one inlet and possibly going to the next. So that's something that you have to kind of keep in mind whenever you're using open road to drainage. You do need to place gutters inside of there just so the program knows that if there is bypass jumping one inlet, it knows where it should be collected at downstream. It doesn't automatically do it. So to get to the place gutter tool, we'll go to the layout tab and go to place gutter. Now inside of here, you have a few different options. You can define your pool lengths. You can define your segment lengths. Normally I just leave those as is, but if you want to define those, you can. Your parameters, you got two different methods is using trace slope or between nodes. We're going to use the one that says between nodes for this example. And then you have to define your feature definition. So basically what is your gutter from point A to point B. Now on this one here, we're going to go to links, stormwater, drainage, and then gutters. And then you can see all the gutter types that you can define that we have set up by default. And for this example here, our gutter is going to be curb and gutter type B. So I will select it. And then from there, you basically define where that water is going from point A to point B. And you'll see down here, it says select your start node. So I'll zoom into this one right here. And I'll go ahead and select my start node. And as you can see, as I'm hovering over it, you'll see defined points that I can select to. I want to select it basically how the water is going to be flowing from this inlet to the next. I don't want to go from this connection point right here because if I do that, I'm not going to get the correct spread widths and so forth later on down the road of how it's depicting how that water is going through there. So I definitely want to go right at that point of where the water is coming in at. So I'm going to go ahead and select this connection point right here. And I'll go down to the next inlet and do the same thing. And now you'll kind of see this brownish line going through there. So that's the gutter for that. And then I'll do the same thing for this inlet going down to the next one. And then I'll simply just right click to reset it. And then I'm finished. Since this one here is in a sag, I don't have to worry about bypass going to it because all this water is going to be going into this inlet and going out somewhere once that rainfall event is finished. So that's the basics of using the place gutter tool. Once we compute the network a little bit later on, what you're going to see is this gutter line right here, it'll actually show you the actual spread width. So however much water is being collected at this area for that particular rainfall event, it'll actually show you, instead of just being a line, it'll actually show it as a triangle or a trapezoid, depending on the situation that you got. It'll actually show you that spread width and kind of give you a representation of how much water is going into the roadway for that particular rainfall event. So to kind of give you a visual of that. But that's the basics of using the place gutter tool.